This country was conquered by those who move forward, and so will space. The growth of our science and education will be enriched by new knowledge of our universe and environment. But why some say the moon? Why choose this as our goal? And they may well ask, why climb the highest mountain? Why 35 years ago, fly the Atlantic? We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other thing. Not because they are easy, but because they are hard. This country of the United States was not built by those who waited and rested and wished to look behind them. Space. It's the stuff that childhood dreams are made of. It's rocket ships and launch pad countdowns. But what if we didn't need to be an astronaut or have a rocket ship to go into space? What if we could just drive there? Sound far-fetched? Sound impossible? Well, so did landing a man on the moon a few generations ago. Imagine this. You're driving you and your family to an immense pyramid-like structure far away from the hustle and bustle of city life. As you approach, instead of parking your car and walking to it, you begin to ascend this structure, winding your way up into the clouds as the earth unfolds beneath you. In your vehicle, without the need for rockets or launch pads, you have just entered the troposphere. And for the first time in human history, space will be accessible to anyone. No need to be an astronaut, no need for solid rocket boosters. People can park their vehicles in these lower reaches, walk around and gaze down at our planet beneath them. The air is still breathable and the atmosphere is still tolerable. There will be restaurants, shops, hotels, and other entertainment. It's the lower platform of the road to space and it will be open to everyone. But that's only the beginning. And above these heights, the real wonder takes shape. From the lower tier, electric trains and vehicles will take passengers to the pinnacle of the structure into the 32 miles above the planet. Secure in a pressurized controlled environment, you are now in the mesosphere, higher than any commercial aircraft can fly. In this upper tier, you are effectively in outer space. And here, the limits of what was possible in terms of research, commerce, and travel are shattered. Solar energy powers everything here. Laboratories from every scientific discipline are here too, busy creating breakthroughs and advances without the constraints of having to be resupplied by any way of earthbound spacecraft. Launch pads and control stations for the exploration of space's outer regions are here. And these craft will be departing from an environment which because of its altitude, won't require even a fraction of the energy and resources to launch them. From here, begin the journeys to the ends of the universe. The benefits to mankind from having an easily suppable, permanent alcove in space will completely revolutionize not only the way we think of our world, but life on our planet entirely. From it, scientific advances will take a quantum leap in every field. Precious elements, which are rare on Earth, will be mined in abundance. Medical advances, which benefit all of humanity, will be realized. Life on Earth will be forever changed. And best of all, the road to space isn't some unattainable dream that depends on technologies of the future. The means to achieve it is at our fingertips and the technology is here, and it's here right now. Now, everyone is an astronaut. All we need is the resolve and the will to make it happen.